What's going on, folks? It's the leader of the Wolfpack, K Spade the Prospect. I'm back today with a brand new Miami Dolphins owner franchise video. Before we get to the gameplay, I promised you guys that we would check in on the bros this week. And man, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this time I am officially the bearer of bad news. Now, you guys see Nate Allen has all the stats and strong safety. I was like, did they trade Johnny? I scrolled down a little bit further. Johnny's got nine tackles on the season, an INT, two deflections. So I know he was playing at one point. Got to find out what's going on. Well, when I click on his profile, what I saw I wasn't prepared for, man. Johnny is not only hurt, he's got a fractured kneecap. He's going to be out for 23 weeks. And this is week eight. So he's got 23 more weeks. He was hurt really early, I think week two or week three. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, Brock Osweiler has avoided injury like a beast. The man has taken 100% of the snaps for the Texans. Josh is yet to throw a pass. Brandon Whedon is yet to throw a pass. And if you look at it right here, it kind of looked like Josh got demoted to third string quarterback. Anyway, we get to the field, man. We got a good gameplay today. We got the number nine offense versus the number one defense in the world. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm probably tripping. Maybe not in the world, but definitely in the NFL. Adam Gates, who is known to be an offensive mind. Some of the things he was able to do with Jay Cutler and Matt Forte over in Chicago, we was hoping it would translate over to Miami because we also got a running back that's really good at receiving out of the backfield in Arian Foster. You got a young quarterback, not so young in terms of age, but still kind of developing. I don't feel like we've seen Ryan Tannehill ceiling yet. I sure as hell hope not. So we're hoping that some of this offensive stuff to translate. Now we got a division rivalry out here and the first thing I noticed, no Ryan Fitzpatrick. They got Geno Smith under center. I guess Fitz is hurt or maybe they got rid of him. But for the number one defense in the world, that makes you feel pretty good. The second play of the game, Geno drops back, throws a perfect pass to Kiko Alonso. I love Kiko. I told you guys if he can stay healthy, I feel like he's a really good backer. But I can't even give him credit for anything right here. Geno threw it right to Kiko. The only thing he had to do was make his hands like a basket and catch the football. I give him credit for that because after he caught the ball, I mean, he could have dropped it. And then right after he caught it, he had, you know, Chase Morrow right there trying to bring him down. The Miami offense starts off with excellent field position. The first play of the series is a wide receiver screen to Devontae Parker who takes it to the house. This is what I'm saying about Adam Gates. Like, Adam Gates is an offensive mind and he can take these weapons and make them more valuable. He can take a pistol and make it like a sniper rifle. That might be a reach, but you get my point. When we get another look at that play, man, shout out to Kenny Steels. Kenny Steels got out there and threw the block that sprung the play. Beautiful. 7-0 fins. That's how you want to start the game off against a tough opponent and especially a division rivalry. Geno Smith and the New York Jets offense back on the field. They looking to do damage. Check him out right here. Chase Amaro seemed like that guy that Geno looks for a lot. Now, he threw the interception trying to throw to Jace. The first completion was to Jace. Right here, he goes back to him again. However... It's a holding on that. It's some dirty laundry on the field. We're going to back him up. Later in that drive, it is third and 13. Geno goes up high to Eric Decker. Decker makes an amazing catch. He comes down shy of the first down marker, and he comes down a little awkwardly. You see him down on the ground, grabbing at his back, hitting on the turf. Get him out of here. Go put a Band-Aid on that guy or something. It is fourth and short. Of course, the Jets are going to have to punt. You got the fans' offense back on the field. First and 10. We passing, yo. We attacking the center of the field. Our tight end doing a little bit of work, too. Jordan Cameron with a nice reception. Tannehill looking good so far. That's what you do. You get him a wide receiver screen. You get him a pass to the tight end. Build that confidence early. Get him going. And look at Arian Foster. I talk about his receiving out of the backfield skills, but right there, the man was just running the football like a tank. Speaking of like a tank right here, look at this guy, yo. Okay, Arian, because I was thinking about getting your ass out of here. I was really thinking about getting him out of here and just running with a Ajayi, but Arian Foster has fought back into this starting role, and he looked like he deserved it. And that's what I want to see. Like, you know, you the big money guy. Check us out, though. We get stuffed. We don't get a first down. Fourth and 17, we attempt the field goal. The field goal is blocked. Calvin Pryor comes out of nowhere with the scoop. Nobody can catch Calvin Pryor. He runs into the end zone for the Jets' first score today. Wow. Crazy. That kind of makes you feel like you should have went for it. They got a great jump off the snap. 
beautiful block, and it was nothing but white jerseys right there. We got a 7-7 game. And check us out. We're going passing right here. Ryan Tannehill is wrapped up in the backfield by Muhammad Wilkerson. Now, I told you guys at the start of this video, the Jets front four, front seven, really, not to be played with. Second and long, I talk about the receiving out of the backfield skills, that this is what I'm talking about. Look at Arian Foster breaking tackles, stiff-arming fools, picking up a ton of yards after the catch only for that entire game to be negated by an illegal block in the back. Guess who? Kenny Steele. Can't get mad at him. He threw a clutch block for us on the touchdown play. But right there, hey, man, if you can see the back of their jersey, you probably shouldn't block him, Kenny. That's what they tell me. That's what they tell me. Second and long, Tannehill dropping back the pass. He's got time in the pocket. He checks it all the way down to Jordan Cameron. Cameron is going to be real close to a first, a little bit shy, but very close to it. We got a third and short right here. This is something easy, man. We pick that up. We jump ahead later. We are in the red zone. Tannehill across the middle. Beautiful pass right there. You want to know who caught it? I tell you, Jarvis Landry. We get juice on the board. Y'all be telling me all the time, look, check out the kid, man. Juice is nice. 14-7 Miami, I like what we got here. Geno, back on the field, attacking the back. It's crazy, both of these quarterbacks are kinda, they doing the safe thing, man. They looking for tight ends, they looking for running backs out the backfield. I mean, I ain't knocking these dudes, I'm just saying that's a real conservative way to play. Once again, we got a check down, looks like to the fullback right here. That fullback got cracked by Rashad Jones. He picks up the first though, letting everybody know from the seat of his pants. First down, first and 10. Jets still moving. Faced with a third and short. Later in that drive, Geno is flushed out the pocket. Keeping his eyes down the field. Takes a strike. That's Rashad Jones again. Rashad Jones is here to play today, man. He is here to play. Big time INT. I see you, Rashad. That's the kind of stuff we need, fam. Tannehill operating deep in his own territory. Checking it down. Probably about 89 yards on the play right there for Arian Foster. Still being super conservative. Second and short, Tannehill is trying to get rid of it. He gets hit. He fumbles. Dolphins players was right there. Could not pick up the peel. The Jets would recover with the best field position any offense has ever seen. Geno comes out, almost throws an INT. That's a beautiful interception. We get another look at it. We get a booth review, matter of fact. Beautiful catch right there. Just couldn't get, a, couldn't get the feed in. I was going to say he couldn't get two feet in, but when you look at it, he really didn't get any feet in. But that's a hell of a catch. It's a hell of a catch. Now, Geno is the type of quarterback that could goof this up. So, I like that they are passing. Third and goal. Still from the three-yard line. Geno rolling out. Looking downfield. Keeping the defenders stationary with his eyes. He's looking down the field. He's still looking at receivers. So, they're looking at receivers. And Geno runs right in. Geno is not known for scrambling, but he ain't slow by a long shot. Dolphins offense back on the field. Tannehill sacked again. Stripped again. Fumbles again. Loses it again. Geno and his offense back on the field. I don't know what Rashad Jones just did right there. I wasn't controlling that dude. He just did that on his own. Passing offense. That's half the distance to the goal right there. Check them out. Later in that drive, man, check this out. You like one yard out. Everybody on the, on the team knew what was coming. Like everybody on the Dolphins knew what was coming. Just couldn't stop it, man. So we got a 21-14 game. The problem has been turnovers. And really, it's been sacks. You can't protect Tannehill. He's getting hit. He's fumbling. And for some odd reason, the Dolphins cannot pick up fumbles. I don't know why. So what do you do? You change the game plan. You go back to screens. You attack short yardage plays. Plays where you can get rid of the football fast. And you let your playmakers make plays. Beautiful play. Arian Foster so far is the MVP of this game. If the Dolphins win this game, it'll be because of Arian Foster. He's made play after play after play. We got a 24-21 game to start the third quarter off. That pressure is still getting to Tannehill. It's like the Dolphins ain't listening to my own play. Third and 10, though, you got to take a shot. When you do, check out the mismatch you got over there. Bust the screen, tried to press Devontae Parker. Are you stupid? Are you crazy? I know your name Buster, but are you really a Buster? You can't press Devontae Parker. He gets off the press. Beautiful pass right there by Rand Tannehill. The rest of it was just deciding what type of celebration you want to do on the way to the end zone. You can see how easily he got off of that press. Tannehill almost overthrew him. He did a great job to reach out, secure the ball, make a great catch, and the rest of it is just running. 
Everybody in the league can do that at different speeds, but everybody in the league can do that. 28-24. Seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. This is going to be a high scoring affair, apparently. Even though you look at the scoreboard, you go, man, these teams are scoring like crazy. The Dolphins' defense really hasn't allowed much. It's been the offensive turnovers that's killing Miami. Gino and his offense, they trying to change that though. They trying to work on the drive. They putting something together here. Third and 11. Gino got some pressure on him. He just barely gets rid of it. But that was one of those, ah, I'm about to get hit. It was one of those passes right there. That was Mario Williams on the pressure right there. I believe Mario was being held, but that's a whole nother story. First and 10 for the Dolphins offense. Look at Arian Foster. I'm telling y'all, Arian Foster want this dub, bruh. It's inspiring to see this dude run this football this hard. He's been catching out the backfield great. He's running the football hard. This man wants this game. On third and six, Tannehill's got a receiver wide open. With a piss poor throw, the receiver has to lay out for the catch, and then he's not able to pick up the first. The Dolphins have to punt. Geno and his offense back on the field. The Dolphins' defense has been playing phenomenal. They can keep this up. They can get the dub. It won't be a pretty win, but it'll be a win. 39, Geno, it's a must-pass situation. The Dolphins' defensive coordinator dials up the best play. He blitzes the nickel back, and Geno was flushed out of the pocket. He just couldn't get away from the DB. The DB just had too much speed. Beautiful. You put the Dolphins' offense back on the field. Can we solidify this thing? Let's get our dub. Jarvis Landry on a quick slant. He picks up the first down after the catch. Somebody's hurt. It ain't Jarvis, so I don't care who it is. We got a Jet defender over there down. They holding their back. These dudes got some weak backs. I mean, at least that's what it looked like. First and 10, we still passing. I don't really know why, but it's working, so I'm not tripping. The Dolphins, who were 29th in offense, they are actually putting up some yards today against a really good defense. Smart check down right here. Oh, my God, Sims. I felt like you had the chance to bounce back outside and possibly score on that play, but we'll take it. 21 yards after the reception right there. That's huge for the Dolphins. Another look, you can see what I'm saying. They super short passes. You just got to trust your players to make plays. The blocking was beautiful. And for a tight end, a backup tight end at that, Sims did a hell of a job of getting down the field, picking up some, some rack. I was going to say yak, but I'll take rap. Play action pass for the Tanny. Tanny dropping back, taking a strike in the corner of the end zone. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. Put seven more points on the board. Devontae Parker said, hold up, coach. I might be the damn MVP. Parker is playing phenomenal. Arian Foster is playing phenomenal. Deshaun Jones started this game off playing really good. Everybody's really making plays. Kind of except for Tannehill. But that's a hell of a pass and an even better catch making sure to get both toes down before being knocked out of bounds or falling out of bounds or whatever you want to call it. That boy Buster Screen is getting worked over today. If you a Buster Screen fan, dislike this video and get your ass out of here. For you get burnt too. Like Buster get burnt out here. Anyway, Jets offense back on the field. Chase tomorrow. that tight end takes a big time hit from Rashad Jones. I already told y'all Rashad is playing great too. Geno across the middle of the field, man. These fans is hitting, boy. Then stepped over him. Allen Iverson style. Step over him. Get your mind right, fam. What's wrong with you? Stop trying to stand in the way of us and our dub, man. This is our dub. Third down, they go for the screen playing. Oh, my God. Who is that? Jelani Jenkins comes like he shot out of a cannon. Big time hit right there. Destroying the running back. First and 10 for the Miami offense. They going back across the middle. This time, they hit that tight end, Jordan Cameron. I felt like that was the touchdown pass, fam. They say... It's not, though. It don't even matter. It's first and goal from the one. The Tanny keeps it. He falls into the end zone, man. The Fins look great today. Other than those fumbles, other than the strip sacks, they look great. We draw the curtains on the affair, man. I gave y'all a lot in this video. I gave you a great A gameplay. I gave you the resurgence of Arian Foster. I gave you the up-and-coming receiver, Devontae Parker. I gave you an update on the bros. It was a bad news update, but I gave you an update nonetheless. And it's about time for me to get the hell up out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, though. If you did, as always, man, show your love by banging the like button. It only takes a second, and it really shows me that you guys support the series. If you're new here, I urge you to subscribe and join the notification squad, fam. Do not trust YouTube to remind you when the videos go live. Get in that notification squad. But that's all I got for today, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm out the next time, y'all. Peace.